Well, in this week's Cardiology Countdown, we have use of CRT in patients with atrial fibrillation, bariatric surgery uh, in preventing diabetes, and an interesting look at multiple different new risk markers for better risk prediction. So first up is a subgroup analysis that's a kind of intriguing one, I thought, that looked within the RAFT trial that looked at patients uh, getting either an ICD randomized or an ICD plus uh, cardiac resynchronization therapy. And they looked at the subgroup of patients with permanent atrial fibrillation. And interestingly, the primary endpoint did not differ, cardiovascular death or cardiac rehospitalization, uh, in the AFib subgroup. Um, overall. Now, they did see a trend towards fewer rehospitalizations, but interestingly, no different on the six minute walk test. And so it's just a small subgroup, about uh, 250 patients, uh, but one that makes one look at whether the permanent atrial fibrillation is a group that one would think twice about uh, resynchronization therapy. So, an intriguing first peak needs some validation. Next up is a large analysis of 15-year follow-up following bariatric surgery to see how well it prevents diabetes. This was a case control study um, of patients who had uh, bariatric surgery uh, and matched controls followed for 15 years. And they found that the incidence of developing type 2 diabetes uh, over that 15-year period was um, 28 cases per 1,000 patient years of follow-up in the control group, and that was reduced to just 6.8 cases, so a more than 80% reduction in the risk of developing diabetes. I think this has been uh, well described. I think this is an observational study, but one that reinforces this notion. Interestingly, they found that this benefit was seen at, in patients who had impaired fasting glucose at baseline and was less related to BMI, but more related to the baseline uh, pre-diabetes uh, state. And the number one pick uh, this week is a look um, at uh, how to improve risk stratification beyond the Framingham risk score. And uh, an analysis that looked in the MESA study that has done multiple different measures of um, atherosclerosis and risk markers. And they found uh, that there were four factors that could improve the Framingham risk score, notably adding family history and CRP. That was done in the Reynolds risk score that Paul Ridker developed, but also adding the ankle brachial index and coronary calcium scoring. Uh, and actually, the latter, the coronary calcium score, had the biggest change in, in risk uh, profile. Now, interestingly, uh, brachial uh, flow media dilation and carotid intermediate thickness did not improve uh, the net reclassification of risk. And so those are things that can be done, but in this study did not improve risk uh, stratification. And so I think a way to look beyond Framingham risk score at actual visualizing risk or using uh, CRP and certainly family history, all useful additional risk factors. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.